be setting the floats, the float height and the float drop on our LO twenty six carburetors. And we'll go ahead and examine a couple other parts inside of the bowl of the carburetor just for your identification purposes. There are two jets in the LO two oh six carburetor. This is your main jet that screws into the top of the emulsion tube found right underneath it. This is your pilot jet. That's your idle circuit up to about half throttle and it does include a little bit of fuel at wide open throttle but its main purpose is from idle to half throttle. Um, this is going to be a 13 thousandths no-go per the Briggs & Stratton LO206 rules. So it's very very small, slightly larger than a human hair and it becomes plugged very easily. A little bit of uh, uh, oxygenated fuel with ethanol will plug them easily as well as a little bit of sand or dirt or grit that might get through our fuel filter. So uh, once in a while it's, it's important that you go ahead and thread them out with a small bladed screwdriver and clean them out very well with brake clean. Um, we use non-chlorinated brake clean. That's a little healthier for you. It takes a little longer to evaporate than some of the others but uh, maybe a little bit safer on the environment as well. So what we're going to talk about today basically is going to be the setting of the float height and float drop. And I'll point out a couple other parts here. Our float height tab is right here. And you'll see that I'm wiggling the spring that's connected to the inlet needle. If I can get a little closer or you can get in with the camera. The inlet needle opens and closes as the floats rise and drop. That allows fuel to come in from the main nozzle. What we're going to do is set our float height and also the drop. The drop is determined by this float drop tab and its ability to hit against this cast post and stop the floats from dropping. On the engine, this carburetor will be oriented like that. So you would see that that float drop tab stops the floats from dropping clear to the floor of the bowl of the carburetor. So let's go ahead and first check where we're at. I really like to use just a regular dial caliper. Um, you can use the depth end of it on this end to check. And if we can zoom in again, we'll see about where we're at. Just off the base of the carburetor where the gasket sits to where it just touches the top of the float. And we're at about 880 right there. I'll check the other side. Sometimes these floats will get a little bit wonky and sideways on you. See that one's a little bit high. We'll give it a tweak just to try to narrow that down some. And our float height is about 880. That's a pretty good setting for this class. Uh, we'll go ahead and check the float drop. An easy way to do this on the bench is to gently lift both of these floats until you feel it hit against that drop tab. I always set my float drops at inch 050. That was pretty close at inch 060. If we wanted to tweak that just a little bit, use some needle nose pliers, especially the ones with the hooks on, work really well. And you can just give this a slight pinch. lift up our floats until that tab just does hit. Just drag this back and forth. Not too bad. An inch and 49 thousandths, I can live with that. Let's go ahead and recheck our height because occasionally they'll change. When you change the float height, it can put a little pressure on the floats themselves. You'll see them change. And we're still pretty close to 880, so I'm happy with that. If we wanted to change the height of this, it's very easy to raise those float heights um, by reaching into here with a small screwdriver and bending backward. If we were wanting to lower those floats, get the float height lower, then we would want to bend this tab down and the easiest way to do that is to get on top of here and bend in. Just check it again, make sure that we're still where we need to be. I 
about 877 right there again within a thousandth or two we can live with that um, some people really get into tuning with the float height um, there is some power to be set it if you can get it right for the length of the straightaway and when the float drops to when it starts putting more fuel in um, generally I would say probably 99% of the racers can't feel the difference uh, when that float drops and when it fills back up um, I'll let that up to you you can you can play with that if you like general settings on the float heights on these carburetors is from 850 to 900 that would be 850 thousandths to 900 thousandths uh, the tune difference on the dyno from 850 being more rich than 900 is minimal but you will see a little bit of throttling difference uh, on and off throttle with a richer setting when we're ready to put this back together you'll see that there's an o-ring as we took the bowl off and you'll see it's already started to come out of its groove this is very simple if you don't have a new bowl o-ring wet your fingers and gently stretch this o-ring out and many times you can reuse it it's important that it doesn't become pinched because then the bowl will leak and you'll have other issues to have to deal with make sure that's fitted all the way in that groove as such and we're ready to put it back together I'm going to turn the carburetor over so I don't drop that gasket back out and then we'll put the two little Phillips screws in I use the same little screwdriver that I used for the float height tab to get these started. And then we'll use a Phillips to get them snug. That's setting the float height and drop on the yellow 206 carburetor. If you have any further questions, you're welcome to call us at Carlson Motorsports, 765-339-4407. We'll be glad to help you out with anything you need for the Briggs & Stratton L0206 engines. Thank you.